Good morning, you're watching Morning Headlines. I'm Azif Azuddin and it's the 14th of May. Dominating today's headlines and the news is the Terengganu crisis, which is across all different papers. Take a good look at these three faces. Now, these are the people we're going to be start talking about in a few minutes. But anyway, across different papers is the same story for NST, Berita Harian, The Sun, Utusan Malaysia, Malay Mail, and Hairan even dedicates a small little space to them. So what exactly is going on here? Now what has happened here is that the former MB of Terengganu, Ahmad Syed, is causing a lot of trouble over his resignation. A year ago, after GE13, PM Najib and him had a discussion over that based on the dismal performance of BN in Terengganu. He was only supposed to hold on to the post for a year. Actually, yes, he was supposed to resign just around this time of the year. But the problem is now that he's not going down without a fight. So after his resignation, what has happened here is that three other assemblymen have also pulled out from AMNO and joined him in the fray. Now the problem here is that with the MB declaring that he has left AMNO, this is a bit of a political crisis happening here in Terengganu. People are comparing it to the Perak crisis uh, a few years back, but there is a distinctive difference which is which is outlined in this paper as you can read soon later. But essentially here now what has happened is that the MB has gone out to say that Najib, it is insensitive of you to do this, to have me to resign just when I'm, my daughter is about to get married. I'm planning for her wedding. Why are you doing this to me? So, he's trying to gain sympathy by using his daughter's marriage as a leverage here. But also, Pakatan, which holds 15 seats in the state right now, is possibly eyeing for the Kelantan MB post should they vote for a no of confidence against the new uh, Menteri Besar, which has just been elected. Now, this is a very big political picture, which is difficult to describe in a five-minute video. But I would say that if you want to know a bit more on the issue, Senior Harian, the star and also NST has very good analytical opinion pieces on the Terengganu crisis and I think it's worth reading out one to know a bit behind the politics of what's happening in Terengganu. So now the current numbers we have now is that 15 assemblymen in Barca National, 15 assemblymen in the Pakatan Coalition and two independent members. Now whether or not these independent members is going to possibly move over to the Barca side or Pakatan side remains to be seen but I think that there's a very huge legal question hanging right in the air right now. So the fact is Across these different papers, there are different facts being presented depending on how updated these papers are. So, it's a story in progress. Facts are changing. There are new developments. So, I would suggest that you follow us on BFM News on Twitter or listen to our hourly updates to just get an idea of what's going on here. Uh, it's a big mess and I think everyone is just feeling really, really heavy with all these facts. But now, let's move on to the other smaller stories which I find more interesting. Utusan has a very interesting story down in the middle pages. This is also carried by the other papers but not highlighted as much. So, just about yesterday, this happened. There, look, look at the headline right there. Islam berdepan ancaman human rights and you have a picture of Najib praying right there. Now what this story is about is that yesterday Najib attended the Tilawah Al-Quran competition in Kuantan. When he went up to give a speech, he said that human rightism which he presents as an ideology, which it isn't actually, is liberal. He carries the LGBT culture, uh, which is against the Islamic way of life. Now, granted, yes, he is speaking to the mass. He's speaking to an audience which, you know, agrees to this sort of views. But on one hand, you will have to question that Malaysia is already signing on to several UN human rights acts and charters, which promotes diversity, which promotes the discourse of LGBT rights and also the rights of other minorities. So is this a case of one hand signing all these human rights acts, but on the other hand, we are doing this otherwise. So really, Najib, what are you doing here? I mean, the question is, what is Najib's stand on human rights? I mean, this is the sort of thing you expect Isma to say, but Najib saying this in a closed environment does question where does his sentiment lie and where does Malaysia's stand on human rights actually lie when this sort of statements come out. Human rightism, I mean, he presents it in quite a negative way. When human rights is supposed to be a discourse of changing elements, which is supposed to be a discourse of diversity, right? That's Najib. Uh, you can see these other stories also carried by other papers. Another smaller story, which you can see written in the smaller headlines of today, as you can see, is here. Anwar fractures arm in incident, in accident. So what happened yesterday around 11 o'clock at night was that Anwar got into an accident near Desa Sri Hartamas and walked away with a fractured arm. So it's a minor injury. He says he's okay. And I guess it's all fine. So I'm just wondering whether lawsuits are going to come out from this, right? Um, no mention of that yet though. Now another story Malay Mail is running on the inside pages is about flares, smoke bombs, sold online and sent via post laju. I think what's more interesting is that the fact it is actually sent by post laju. And there you have the headline and the picture of the Facebook pages that are actually selling this stuff. So this is kind of like a small expose story done by them. I guess the old days of walking into your convenience store, in, into your Kodai Runchit and buying 
flares and smoke bombs are just gone. So now you can get all on the internet. So what are the police doing about it? All they're saying is that these things are illegal, but no action has been taken upon them just about yet. And of course, we will end today with Harian Metro. So Metro also, as I said earlier, runs a small piece on the Trangano crisis. And then they feature these two artists, which I have no idea who they are and what they're about. Lima Ibu Bapa Dibuang Setiap Minggu. So five parents are discarded and sent into homes every week. Uh, and of course, a small story about Tendangan Terbang Sidara, a 21-year-old girl who knows Kung Fu. So my word of the day today is human rightism. Is it an ideology? And is it really that bad? Najib, are you afraid of human rightism? Is Malaysia afraid of human rights? So that's all I have for you this morning on Morning Headlines. I'm Azafazidin for BFM 89.9.